Peter here, aka Peter Forgot 10, bringing another episode of the Movie Review Show. The good movies are always reviewed. Okay, back at the end of our movie review today. And we're continuing the second month of Scream Fest. <laughs> okay, now on today's episode, um, I'm going to take a look at a film that um, is a good old-fashioned monster movie for anybody who loves horror films. But being that it is a good old-fashioned monster movie, does that make it good? Literally, does that make it good? Good, but we'll get to that pretty soon. But what film is that, you may ask? It is none other than Watchers. Now, if you guys can tell, um, I have the two-pack of this um, with Watchers and Watchers 2. I'm going to watch Watchers 2 after I do this video. I'm going to review it. And... Be warned, if you're going to buy Watchers, this DVD is very expensive and very hard to find. Um, you can get the movie on Amazon for like $5, or you can, or you can go into a, or, um, you can, uh, or if you're willing to go to the limit and pay $100, I highly recommend you do that. But, I'll get into whether the movie is worth all that or not. I don't know, but I was lucky to find this movie. I found it at, like, an FYE for, like, $5 there, surprisingly. I didn't think they had this film. But it was in the used bin, and I was like, oh, oh my god, is it really Watchers 1 and 2? And I bought it, as I said in my other video. And, and I'm not willing to cover this up and show Watchers 1, so there's, like, a catalog with it. I'll pull up this with the chapter index and show Watchers. But, uh... Watchers was a film made back in 1988 and was directed by John Hess. And this was based on a book by Dean Coots called The Watchers. And this movie bears um, little resemblance to the book because when the movie, when they were making the film, they changed a lot up about it. Like in the book, um, I think like um, I think the character Travis Cornell was not a teenager. In this in the book, he was an adult and. Also, um, they changed up a lot, and in a way, um, and in a way, after seeing, um, a lot of films with that sort of thing when they do that, um, I don't think it needs to behave for that, because, um, a lot of books do tend to do that. Books based on movies do tend to do that, but I'll get into that later. But the film has, um, an unknown cast, but one person you may not, you may know, you got, uh, Corey Feldman, uh, not Corey Feldman, Corey Haim. I keep thinking of them because they're both in The Lost Boys, which I'll review another, sometime today. But um, you got Corey Haim. Um, you might remember him from The Lost Boys, too. Sadly, he's not with us anymore because he passed away in 2010. God rest his soul. He was a very good actor. And he died young, too. So poor kid. Yeah, I was surprised at how young he was when he passed away. But he's the main character in this film. Um, you got uh, Barbara Williams, who I don't know anything about. And surprisingly, Michael Ironside's in this film. Yes, Sam Fisher's in this film. He's one of the people after this thing, but I'll get into what that thing is later. But you got Lala. I don't even know who that is, but she's the girlfriend. Um, and you got Sandy the dog in the film. Now, despite its hate, and despite the fact that it resembles little to the book, what do I think of Watchers? I think, with its good old-fashioned B-horror, I think it makes a fantastic film. I think this film just is, is just below the bottom of the barrel, just because people say, Oh, it bears little resemblance to the book. Oh, that means it's bad. It doesn't. Some of the changes in this, I thought, worked. And I thought they did it a lot better in this than they did in the book. I don't know. In the book. Um, um, I read a chapter. I started reading the book and I got bored out of my mind of it. So I stopped reading it. So pretty much just threw that away. But the movie itself I think is well done. I'll get into why later. But the, pl I'll, but the plot of this film is basically this. Sorry if I'm stuttering. I just can't talk today. Hey, but... It'll improve as this video goes on. But the plot of this book of the movie is basically this. Um, it's basically um basically this company has been working to make stuff for the military uh, and they are using human genes on animals. So 
they use human genes on this this like monster like thing and, and this human genes on this dog which were going to be used in the military Terry to help the, the army hey however the two hated each other and were considered rivals and as that was going on um one night an explosion happens and they both get out uh. Uh, and basically, um, now that um, the dog is out, it rushes, it gets into this kid's um, pickup truck played by Corey A named Travis Cornell, and he befriends the dogs and takes them into his house and, and treats it like its own. And the two pretty much um, perform a friendship together, and, and which was nice to see. But um, what he doesn't know is that now that the dog's with him, the monster is going to kill him. Because what the monster was going to be used for was basically this. Um, it was basically going to be used for, um, basically, um, the, the company really thought to use, um, the monster so that they can lead the dog into, like, a camp. And, and while the dog was in the camp, the monster would be led into the camp so that it will attack the camp. However, now that the dog is with this kid, it doesn't know that um, it's attacking um, a civilian, and and because of all that, um, it's now on the loose now. And whoever the dog comes in contact with, um, the, the monster's pretty much killing it. And so now it so now um, um, Travis gets his mother involved, played by Barbara Williams. And after his girlfriend gets attacked by the monster, the two set out uh, to hide out from the monster as well as hide out from these two NSO agents played by Michael Ironside and some other guy who are destined to find the dog as well as stop the monster and really just, and they really hope to put a stop to it. So will they be able to stop this monster and figure out what it's after with this dog or will they all be the victim of an unlikely and scientific monster that shows that science really does go wrong, no matter how hard you try. Now, I like this film a lot. I really do like it. I remember uh, the first time um, I heard about this film, um, I was watching the making of Pumpkinhead 2, and they brought up Watchers 3. Well, it was on like a Showtime thing. I forget what it was, but it was like Showtime, and they were saying like, Oh, they were interviewing Gabe Bartalos, who does special effects for Leprechaun 2 and Watchers 3. And I got interested because um, I thought that the Watchers films look cool, and I wanted to see what they were like. Like, so, um, basically, um, I had to search high and low for the original Watchers. I tried Netflix. They didn't have those. Watchers 3 was even out. And I even, and I looked up Booger Boy Meister's video and said how much he liked the first one but didn't like the sequels. So in a way, I was a little bit worried about how this series would go. But I still wanted to see it and really see what the series was like. Like, and either way, I kind of enjoy what the, what this film gave us. I don't know, I really don't know why people need to bash this film. film. But I'll get into what I, but what I do like about the film and I think what really makes it work is its story. I think its story is really unique. Um, it just show, and in a way, I think it's just it's. I like the fact that it's not the dog that's the killer. I do like that. I like the fact that um, the monster, the dog, is up against a monster that um, is supposed to be working together, but in the same time, um, but at the same time. Uh, it's pretty much just killing everything it sees and anything this dog comes in contact with. So either way, um, you start to feel sorry for the dog, and you really, and the dog really, and because of how likable the dog is and this bond he shares with him. And this, the monster I thought was actually very well done. Um, um, I do like the fact that um, that um, that um, I don't think I noticed this first or first until after I watched this but it looks a little bit like Bigfoot but it looks a little bit like a Bigfoot monster and in a way I think it kind 
I'll get to that later. But the story I thought was really, really well done. I thought it was thought out. I thought it just was well written. And it doesn't need to be based on a Dean Kutz novel to make it interesting. You can easily do your own movie and that'll make it more interesting. And in a way, I think the way that this film carries out that whole idea really shows that um, it really works and that it is can be well written. And... In a way, I do like the way that they carry out the idea and show it all. And and it's not trying to be just another their monster movie that um, that you may not like. Because um, I know that there are um, films that um, really do act like the usual monster film. But some of them aren't really that good. But here, I think... Um, I think that the idea that the monster thinks like the humans are threats threats really does work and in a way it just shows us that it's not the mon it's not that the monster is crazy and wants to kill everybody it's because he doesn't know and in a way I think that is unique and I think it really gives um, a well thought out idea to the monster and it actually makes you feel um, sorry that they were even messing with it and sorry for what they have done to it and in a way I think it really just shows that scientist science really does go over the edge and science really does really doesn't care about the living but definitely a well thought out story D it, it so I had never actually read the whole Dean Kutz book but there are a little bit of simul of differences but in a way I think they actually make the film more enjoyable so overall, I definitely thought that the, that the director John has, in his own way, didn't need to do the book. He could have done his own. He could have done his own movie, and in a way, it still would have been entertaining. So overall, I definitely think that um, the film definitely has a strong story to it. Now the acting here is very well done. These are actors that I don't think couldn't have acted and I don't think ever got the job, the choice to act in this film. But in a way, I think they do an actually very well done job. I mean, Corey Haim, I don't need to go into him. He's a fantastic actor. And in a way, I think he makes the film work. I think he really gives the film a, a new... A, um, its own leg. And in a way, I kind of find it more believable that um, he is... Um, that he is a teenager rather than being in the military because if you're in the military you would know how to deal with this thing here you have this teenage boy who um, pretty much um, doesn't know what he's dealing with in the way they actually show that he doesn't know what they're dealing with in the way that he shows that he's trying to save uh, this dog I think in a way really saves the film really gives it a new leg and in a way, I think it is well carried out. It's really well showed that Corey Haim is having fun with this role. And and I really wish he'd done another horror film like this. Is it sad that he's gone and sad that we'll never get to see him again, but we'll still live on his legacy with films like this. But I definitely thought that the film um, has a really strong story and well acting to it. Barbara Williams, I thought, did a great job. Um, I like some... I like the love of, the loving mother attitude she gives that and the no the no like no poop attitude she gives uh, gives no no like no fooling attitude she gives but in a way when she finds out what they're dealing with with I think works I think it really does work work and in a way, and there's no need to go into her really much cuz she's doing the usual mother routine but in a way I think it really does work now, um, I think the one neat addition that this film gave was Michael Ironside. And Michael Ironside, I think, is an actor who I think remains underrated and and really deserves more credit than he has been given. I mean, I mean, no one can play Sam Fisher better than him. I've seen the new guy, and the new guy I don't think is even close to him. But... I still thought that the film um, gave him a likable personality and how um, we there is a shocking surprise about him. And in a way, it kind of make, it kind of makes you surprised about him. And and um, 
and you actually do care that the guy is fighting for something rather than just himself. He's fighting to stop this experiment. And in a way, I kind of bought his um, character. I really, I really thought that um, he was not. He's and that he should. That each moment shows that he's not gonna stop stop but he's not gonna back down so in a way i definitely thought that michael ironside gave a great performance in this film and really thought he gave um the character a well done and well thought out attitude that um it's hard to see michael ironside doing that type of character because michael ironside uh now that i think about it yeah we could kind of see it because he is always threatening but it is it's i almost forgot about the but about his attitude in Splinter Cell, and almost forgot about his attitude in um, his other movies. But I can see it now. I definitely can see um, the character now. I can see what he's playing. And to tell you the truth, Michael Ironside, I think, is a very well done actor. And I think um, really should get out. Really should go back to doing films like these, and really should think about going back to do Splinter Cell because no one can play Sam Fisher better than him him and the girlfriend lala did a good job they don't need to go into her because she has little moments and she's still and she's just there to be the heroine the eye candy in the film film it's pretty easy to tell that at the beginning when she's making out with Corey feldman in the barn but still still she was okay but but I think the main thing that the film gets right, I thought they did a great job with the training of the dog. Sandy, I thought, did a good job. Um, I like how smart they made him. I also like how how they made the character. Like, he has the ability to um, know what the world around him. He knows how to handle himself. And I do like that, um, that um, throughout that whole thing, um, it, that um, he shows... He shows that smartness, and in a way, I thought the training here worked well. They weren't using wires and ropes and strings and strings to do it. So, in a way, I think the training paid off, and I think that they did a really good job with with um, making not making it look fake and rubbery, and just really did something new with it, other than just say, "Oh, just pull this" or something. I thought they did um, a great job with it, and. I thought the training with the dog worked. Um, and Sandy the dog, I, I don't think I need to say that his acting was great because it's a dog being a dog. But still, I thought that Sandy was good. That's him right there. It's a golden retriever. So if you guys are wondering what breed he is, he's a golden retriever. But I thought this film was very well done. And I like the B horror feel this film gets. And this film was produced by Roger Corman, who has done a lot of B horror films. So if you're gonna say, "Oh, this film's too B, too cheesy," it's a Roger Corman movie. Literally, have you? If you haven't seen a Roger Corman movie, you're missing out because Roger Corman has done B horror like this. He knows what he understands what B horror is like, and in a way. Sorry that I heard something out there. But in a way, I think his character does really work. Like, what are you going to do? Like, are you, like you're going to say, like, oh, like, you're going to say Humanoids with a D with a cheesy BR film. But that's a, that's a bad film. Humanoids for the Deep was a bad film, too. Film, too. But still, I like the B-horror attitude it gives to this. It doesn't show off the B-horror However, it doesn't show itself as a B horror film. It really takes tame to that. It really just show it tames it down from that. It really just throws forgets the idea that it is being a B horror film and really tries to be something different. And in a way, I kind of like that. That and it and it is a and it isn't a B horror film at all. It's just a film that was misunderstood in Looked at just because people thought, um, oh, it's a cheesy B horror film because it's not because it's by Roger Corman. There are a lot of cheesy B horror films for people who are famous in the world. So don't act like that. Roger Corman has not done any cheesy B horror films. Still, I thought that he did a great job with it. Um, 
I do, and I do like some of the effects in the film. It may, some of the th scenes in this film may be a little tame, but some of the scenes in this film I thought were awesome and really just gave um, a cool, gave cool gore effects, and I thought they really fitted perfectly. And still, still, it has a share of gore, it has a share of blood. So if you guys are thinking, no, it's gonna be tame like every other horror film I've seen, it's surprisingly bloody. It's surprisingly bloody. Yeah. One guy gets shoved onto a coat hanger. I love that scene. See, so overall, it's not a bad movie. Now, does it have its problems? Yes. And I think the one thing that I can say is definitely the fact that the creature um, looks stupid. It looks more like Bigfoot. And the fact that they don't show it much really takes it away. And, and it's not that it's bad. It's just the fact that they don't show it much, which I thought was stupid. Man. But it just didn't feel right because if you're gonna have a monster movie, at least show the creature a little bit rather than just keeping it in shadows and saying, Oh, it's a monster, it's coming at you. Oh. Now, it can work and make it creepier if it's turned out properly and if it's cool or not. If there is plenty of blood, this, this counts. This literally counts. It has the blood, it has the gore. So there's no need to complain. It's not like. Oh, it's the tamest horror film in the world. Leprechaun Origins was tame as heck. And that movie is a piece of trash that should be put in the toilet, pooped on, and forgotten. Excuse me there, but... I but I just did not like that film. I'll get into that film another time. But, but now, still, I... But still, I think this film is judged... Even though the monster effects don't look that great, the special effects in this film do look well done. And overall, Watchers is a fun horror film that I think you're not supposed to take seriously. You're supposed to look at it as a fun horror movie. It's not supposed to be like, oh, look at this film. It's going to be the greatest B-horror film of all time. There are lots of films with B-horror films that are films... This could actually take that back. Oh, it's a B horror film. That means it's bad. There are lots of B horror films that are bad. J good. Jack Frost. No, it's Pumpkinhead Two, which I've talked about a million times. Shot. Um. What else is there? Um, Rumpelstiltskin, Leprechaun. Those films are bad. Are not that bad. I mean, those films are not that bad. Um, I just don't. I'm just lost in my thought right now. But I don't think the film really needs that hate, and it deserves a verdict of nine out of ten. And it is a well done, well thought out film that I think was really misjudged and should have got the money back it deserved. So, if you want a good B horror film to watch, I definitely recommend you go see Watchers. Um, it's on. If you want to see the film, um, without paying for it, it's on YouTube. So I forgot to mention that. If you guys are, don't want to get this DVD, still, um, you're gonna still you'll get your money's worth, and you'll you won't have to pay for the film. But still, definitely recommend you go check out Watchers. It's definitely a classic. And this film surprisingly did so well that they actually found that they actually. Double the sequel, Watchers 2. I'm going to go watch that after I do this video. And I'll take as I think of it. But that's my review on Watchers. And after I do that Watchers review, I have a review of a lot of vampire films I plan to review. Um, um, let me grab them. Um, um, first one I have up is Fright Night. Um, I'm going to do this film. Then I kind of come back up and watch The Lost Boys. Bram Stoker's Dracula. I wanted to review that film for a long time. Um, Interview with the Vampire. Vampire. Vampire in Brooklyn. Another Wes Craven film. My favorite vampire of a film of all time. From Dusk Till Dawn. I'm going to review that film. And tell you guys what I think of it. And then after that I got. Uh, I got. These films I'll be reviewing. The Maniac Cop films. And I also have House of a Thousand Corpses. So I have a lot to review. And I'm. And, um, really, because, and the reason why I'm getting these done so fast, because Halloween's next week, and I want to get as many horror films done as I can, and, 
And I'll be sure to tell you guys what I think of, of these movies. Just tell me in the comments what you guys think of Watchers. Tell me if you guys like the film. If you guys hate it, that's fine with me. But if you guys like it, just tell me what you guys think of it. I'll see you guys later. Be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time.